I suppose, Mr. Hilton, the first question anyone asks about Mr. Chips is whether there was a real Mr. Chips. As the author, I don't seem to be an authority on that point. I've had rather a large number of letters from people who assume that their own personal Mr. Chips was mine too. Actually, I never knew any one schoolmaster who was the complete 100% Mr. Chips. He is a combination of many schoolmasters, including my father. Is your father pleased or annoyed to find himself a fictional character? Oh, he denies it altogether, which is exactly what Chips would do in the same circumstances. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks of motion pictures. Well, I can only guess. My father saw a picture about 25 years ago, and the flickering hurt his eyes, so he didn't see another until I became involved in the business. Now he's extremely interested and very, very uncritical. He never says a picture is bad. Hmm. The perfect critic for a producer. <laughs> but you said Chips was a composite character. Are there many like him? There are fewer every year. And when they die, Chips will have disappeared forever from real life. You see, the English public schools, which are not really public at all, but private, have had to undergo many changes to fit the times. Mm, just as the schools in this country have had to adapt themselves to the shifting scene. Of course, there was room for change. They had their faults. I've forgotten most of what I was taught in school, but I remember a few things I learned without being taught, such as blowing glass tubing into fancy shapes or a slight aptitude for ventriloquism, which I developed to circumvent a master who was very deaf. These things have never been of much practical use to me since, but just the same, I know the whole experience was valuable. Any boy that comes under the influence of a Mr. Chips usually turns out to be a better citizen. That's why I'm sorry to see his type disappear, even though I know it's inevitable. <laughs>